okay guys welcome to another tutorial for this tutorial we'll be doing rendering images and animation so first let's deal with rendering images so by now you should have a model that should have materials um, you should have uh, entourage whether trees people cars uh, my particular scene has a camera in there that has already been animated hence you will see it moving here now you don't need to have the camera um, to render images however my scene does have the camera ready for when rendering animation okay now before we render if we try to render now we will probably get a very black scene with no background no sky and this is why we need to use the daylight system so we're going to create a new daylight system by going to the create button and then we're going to go to the systems under the create button okay so go to systems then we're going to create a daylight system i'm going to click hold and drag that will create the compass I'm going to release it will ask you if you want to include a mental ray sky you say yes I'm going to move the mouse left and right to choose the height of the Sun the height of the Sun does not matter just put it at a height that you can clearly see it if you in case you need to edit it I click again once and that is a daylight system so I'm going to press escape to deactivate the daylight button okay now we have the daylight system we can now render so all we need to do is to take a view that we would like I'm going to ensure that my safe frames are on and safe frames will show me exactly what will be rendered if you notice here this yellow rectangle I'm going to bring up my render settings so go render go to render setup as you can see with the render setup you see that I'm using the mental ray um, engine which is what we'll be using um, I want now I'm rendering a single frame because I want to render a single image um, then I'm going to choose my resolution I'm going to choose HD and you see here I have different resolutions that I can choose under the HD preset I'm going to choose the smallest one so we can render quickly and next I want to choose where I want to save the file so I want to choose files and I want to save this as front view and I'm going to choose ok alright so now I just need to hit render and what you'll notice now is your scene rendering now notice when it renders it is rendering the quality of the rendering is based on these slider bars that you see here so the higher the slider bar is the higher the quality of the rendering and of course the longer it will take to render an image this image will possibly take about two minutes to render let's see how long it takes okay it's all done this took approximately one minute to render this frame that's not too bad granted that this is actually a small image because it's actually rendering at 480 by 7 by 270 that's a pretty small image so by doubling the resolution essentially you'd be doubling or tripling the time so what I'm suggesting for your image renders is that you choose a decent resolution maybe 1920 or 1280 and then reduce some of these quality settings so as to balance back out the time now we did in fact choose where we wanted the image to be saved hence if we should go to Windows Explorer on the desktop where I stipulated it should be saved I will see the picture here I can double click it 
and I will see the view there and that's the view that we choose to render now based on the amount of views required you're going to render different images and you would save them as different JPEG files for submission for your assignment for those of us who want to um, to have a more organized saving of images for example let's say you saved this view and I'm going to minimize this and let's say that I wanted to do another view maybe from the left and you rendered an image from the left but then you decided you want to re-render the image from the right but you ha and you had a perfect view and you you would now have to try and from memory align it back to that view so the way to properly solve this is you would need to create a camera for every view that you do and that way your view angle will be saved so for example let's say I'm creating four views then I would want to create four cameras now this doesn't mean that the camera has to be animated as you notice I have an animation camera in my scene that's fine but I also want to have four views that are saved meaning I can go to any view at any time and render that camera angle so to render these four views the quickest way to do that we're going to create a camera so I'm going to go to create I'm going to create a let's create a target camera I'm going to draw the target camera there so as to not get the cameras confused I'm going to go to modify for the camera so I'm going to click on the camera and if you ever have trouble selecting a camera remember that you can use your your scene explorer I have my scene explorer turned off that is this icon right here so your scene explorer allows you to view all the objects in your scene I'm going to dock it to the left here and in my list here I can see that I have a camera 2 right so I can select my camera 2 and I'm going to go to modify and I want to change the name of this to let's say um, wide angle shot so let me create another camera and create another target camera doesn't matter really matter where I aim it currently I just want to create my cameras first so I'm going to click this camera and go to modify and I'm going to call this close up shot now what I'm going to do is switch my view to let's say my wide angle shot camera this is what my camera is seeing but instead of using multiple viewports to change my camera which is what I did previously I am going to use the camera viewport and I'm going to just pan it and orbit it to the view that I want now you couldn't use this method to do when you're animating a camera it wouldn't work as efficiently and it does plain wouldn't work but because these cameras are for single images I can just go into the camera view and move my view which is the same as moving my camera so let's switch to the other camera now um, my close-up camera and I'm going to pan just as if I was moving a perspective view it's a little bit different when you're in a camera view though the zoom doesn't work with the mouse wheel so you need to use this here which is move my camera like that to use my orbit tool and orbit my camera I'm going to pan over and this will be my close up view now let's switch back to perspective view to see what we did so notice when I look in my perspective view I see where I have one camera and this camera is called my close up camera and it's right up close I have another camera 
here that's called my wide angle shot and I have a third camera which is what I previously created my animation from as a matter of fact I'm going to name this camera animation camera so now all my cameras are named so now if I need to switch between views then all I simply do is go back to my close-up shot or I can go to my wide angle shot and I don't have to keep manipulating my perspective view to try and remember what my shot looked like okay so that's a great tip for saving multiple views and you need to go back to a previous view right so with that said you just need to repeat this process to generate images um, that are required for the assignment